Hi everyone, this is Daryl and welcome back to Hypeword. Today I'm looking at the six military sci-fi must-reads. So the first book I have for you guys is Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card. Orson Scott Card's Ender's Game has become a science fiction classic since its publication in 1985. Its premise, that a child prodigy could be trained to become Earth's greatest military leader against a race of seemingly hostile aliens, raises questions about the ethics of war, its psychological effects on soldiers, and the potential influences of the military on a democratic government. Ender's Game is set in the not too distant future, where Earth is ruled by a global government which controls population and suppresses religion. Ender is a third, meaning he is the third child. Third children are as a general rule illegal, but waivers can be granted for the conception of a third based on the interest of the state. Ender's parents were granted such a waiver because it was devised by the government that the children of this couple will be highly intelligent and may be useful in the war effort. Ender's two older siblings, Peter and Valentine, like himself are child geniuses, however each was branded unfit for fleet command in opposite ways. Valentine was too passive while Peter was too aggressive. Ender, as it turned out, possessed both qualities in equal amounts, a temperament the military was searching for in a child so that they could train him to become the leader they needed to win the war. Ender's Game has even become suggestive reading for many military organisations, including the United States Marine Corps, for providing useful allegories to explain why militaries do what they do in a particularly effective shorthand way. I recently did a video on the politics in Ender's Game, which I'll leave a link to here. The second book I have on my list is a Japanese novel and manga by Sakazuraka Hiroshi, All You Need Is Kill. When the alien Gitai or Mimics invade, Keiji is just one of the many recruits sucked into a suit of battle armor and sent out to kill. Keiji dies on the battlefield only to find himself reborn each morning to fight and die again and again. On the 158th iteration of this time loop, he sees something different, something out of place. The female soldier known as the Bitch of War, or the Full Metal Bitch in the manga adaptation. The soldiers wear special jackets, bodysuits and armour that mechanically boost the wearer's strength, giving them a chance in the close range combat against the mimics that seems to be the only way of defeating them. The premise might sound familiar as this is the source material for the big budget sci-fi film Live Die Repeat Edge of Tomorrow and starring Tom Cruise. But don't let that put you off. I read the manga which I loved as it was able to give you an extra dimension with the gore and the violence and the death, you know, the happy things, so we were able to physically see the consequences of war. The third book I have on my military sci-fi must read list is Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein. Starship Troopers takes place at a point in the future as humanity fights against an alien arachnoid species known as the Bugs. It follows young military recruit Johnny Rico and looks back over Rico's time with the mobile infantry, where he finds himself in one of the hardest boot camps in the world. Rico's military career progresses from recruit to non-commissioned officer, and finally to officer against a backdrop of interstellar war. Through Starship Troopers, Heinlein examines moral and philosophical aspects of being able to vote, civic virtue, the necessities of war, and capital punishment. Starship Troopers won the Hugo Award for Best Novel in 1960 and is considered by many to have set the tone for a lot of military sci-fi that followed. The novel has attracted plenty of controversy since it was published, being criticised for its social and political themes which some claim promote militarism, the belief that a country should maintain a strong military capability and be prepared to use it aggressively to defend or promote national interests. I also want to say here, just cause, that I love the film adaptation and I am not even sorry for it. Number four on my list is Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. Kurt Vonnegut's anti-war novel Slaughterhouse-Five was first published in 1969 and tells the story of Billy Pilgrim, a man who becomes unstuck in time. He travels between periods of his life, unable to control which period he lands in. As a result, the narrative is not chronological or linear. Instead, it jumps back and forth in time and place. The events revolve around Billy's capture by the German army and his survival of the Allied firebombing of Dresden as prisoners of war. Through flashbacks and time travel experiences, we discover that Billy believes he was held in an alien zoo on the fictional planet of Tralfamador and has experienced time travel. 
In 1970, Slaughterhouse Five was nominated for Best Novel for the Nebula and Hugo Awards, and has since been widely regarded as a classic anti-war novel, and has appeared in Time Magazine's list of 100 best English language novels written since 1923. An interesting point to note about Slaughterhouse Five is that it parallels real events experienced by the author Vonnegut. As an American soldier during World War II, Vonnegut was captured by Germans at the Battle of the Bulge and transported to Dresden. He and fellow prisoners of war survived the bombing while being held in a deep cellar known as Slaughterhouse Five. While this book is a military classic, I will say, expect to be confused. When you accept that and stop trying to figure stuff out, you'll enjoy it a lot more. Or maybe that's just me who needs everything to be organized. Yeah. The next book I have is Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Old Man's War is the first in the Old Man's War series by prolific science fiction author John Scalzi. It follows John Perry who, upon turning the age of 75, signs up with the enigmatic Colonial Defence Force. No one on Earth knows much about them except that they only recruit people over the age of 75 and have more advanced technology than anyone else on Earth. This technology can transform elderly recruits, restoring their lost youth. But in return, the Colonial Defence Force demands two years of hazardous service in space, defending humanity's colonies from hostile aliens. While being less hard-hitting than most of the books on this list, and less of a general comment on war, it's one of the most enjoyable military science fiction books I've read. I recently did a review video for Old Man's War, which I will leave a link to here. So the last book I have on my list is The Forever War by Joe Haldeman. Private William Mandela is a reluctant hero in an interstellar war against an unknowable alien enemy. Mandela is drafted into an elite military task force and shipped off to war against the Torrens. Due to a relativistic effect known as time dilation, decades have passed when he finally returns home, even though they've only been out less than a year in their time. The Earth he returns to, however, is completely different to when he left it. It's a complete culture shock that leaves him feeling disconnected from the home he once knew. After more years in service, the society on Earth becomes nearly unrecognisable to him. Like Kurt Vonnegut, Haldeman was influenced by his own experiences of veteran of the Vietnam War. Some critics suggest the book is a direct response to Starship Troopers, which is something that Haldeman denies. If you've been a long time subscriber to my channel, you might have seen my Forever War review video that I did a while back, which I will leave a link to here if you're interested. If you have, you might be surprised that I'm including it in this list since I had some major personal issues with the book. But despite that, I strongly believe its comment on war and its fascinating use of time dilation makes it a must read for any fan of military sci-fi. So that's it for my list. If you've got any must read military sci-fi books, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Don't forget to like the video to support the channel and to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos from me. We talk about all things books that are sci-fi, fantasy and sometimes horror. Until next time guys, happy reading. Run.